Okay, before I begin the video uh, about the two different hotlines I'm going to show, I'm going to show you one big issue with this here that I didn't mention in the video, which is that this is very error prone to actually get seated correctly. So I've pushed it in as much as I can, and I actually can't get it to seat correctly. It'll, it'll self-eject as it's printing, and I've had damage to my bed because it's done that. Um, I have gone ahead and pushed this up as high as I can. So if I do something like this, it should be completely flushed. It cannot be. The reason why is that the PTFE tube line that's in here has shrunk and there's filament blocking the PTFE tube from being completely flushed. So my only choice right now is to go ahead and heat this hot end up really high because I was printing in partly carbonate and then try to push this back in so it can seat flushed. If not, it'll keep self ejecting as it's printing. Okay, so I actually had to take off the sleeve heat this to, uh, or actually had the sleeve on, heat it up to 320 degrees Celsius. I could not push it up, uh, so I took the sleeve off, used some pliers, pushed it up. It turned off because um, overheating issue, and um, finally was able to get it up with a lot of force to finally get completely flush. So you can see that there's no little bit of that bottom lip of the throat hanging up. So I can go ahead and tighten this back down. I'm trying to be careful not to touch anything that's super hot. And then I can go ahead and put this back on, which is also still very hot right now. But yeah, th this is just a very error-prone way when the PTFE tube starts to degrade. Their aerospace ceramic PTFE stuff uh, isn't as resilient as one may think. Um, this is a kind of a fatal flaw in that there's more than one component with here. I've had zero issues ever seeding the bimetal hot end. So this is something to think about. Enjoy the rest of the video. Hello, I'm Joseph. And this are these are two hot ends. For the anti-cubic cobra s1 one's the stock default comes shipped with the cobra s1 these are third-party aftermarket uh, hot ends that are bimetal hardened nozzle hardened steel nozzle uh, that are meant for abrasive materials and higher temperatures um, i'm not going to get into the specifics with this yet but i'm going to go ahead and just show some prints so you get some idea this one here is polycarbonate uh, benching polycarbonate is a 250 to 270 degree uh, temperature filament so it's very sensitive to temperature and you can see that there is quite a bit of overhangs here that's been pr presented uh, because polycarbonate is not something you actually actively cool unless you're getting into bridging so this is a this is not cooled at all it sits in um, the enclosure and the bed's at 205 degrees celsius the the printer had uh, several hours to heat up uh, to, before it printed this this goes with the stock nozzle now this one here is with the bimetal hardened steel hardened um, nozzle, which looks a lot better. Uh, that's the, you know, obviously. However, this should not be looking like this. This means that this was printed too cold. These are the exact same G codes between these two. The difference is that the hardened nozzle is colder than a brass nozzle when you heat them up at the same temperature. So when the plastic's going through, the plastic's going out a lot colder when coming out from a hot nozzle, therefore you're not getting these really bad overhangs. That's something to really think about. That means every default that is in the Unicubic Slicer Next software is not tailored for these hot ends. You need to micromanage every little setting to make this work. I'm gonna put up another, um, show another set example here. This is a full sheet of polycarbonate, 0.2 layer. And this is indicative of what I've had a problem with with these bimetal hot ends. Uh, it's very difficult to get a good first layer. Um, part of this is temperature, but the other part of this is the design of the nozzle that's using these uh, upgraded V2 versions. And so I can't get like a really solid first layer. However, uh, with the stock nozzle, this is the result. It is just a clean through and through. I had some glue at the, in the middle section for the benches, but... Um, it is, it's perfect. I stopped it because I didn't need to keep printing because I already have first layers perfect for the, the stock nozzle here. But the stock nozzle just does a really good job at distributing the filament as it needs to. It is just perfect all the way through. I love this to death. We're getting uh, really, really good top surfaces and really, really good first layers. Now, uh, let me go ahead and show you the nozzles and some problems I'm having with these. So this here is the stock nozzle. Uh, there's some filament on here because it kept um, dislodging from the print bed here, which is why I put glue and then globbing it all up. But normally this is perfectly clean. 
no, there's no real filament on here when you're printing. However, I noticed with these um, bimetals that the filament really gets stuck in here and starts to, you know, pull around. This is a clean version. This is the, you know, used version with some filament on it, some black PLA, rapid PLA plus from Elegoo. And um, yeah, it's not ideal. So this has a, an issue with top surfaces where they don't come out as clean as they would with a stock nozzle. And um, they collect filament over time. And so over, over overall, I'm just not happy with the print quality in top surfaces and first layers with these here. Now, beyond the obvious, one is meant for abrasive materials, one is meant for the stock experience. I'm going to say a couple of things about the stock nozzle that may change your mind to go with a third party version. Um, first off, this stuff is glued in. You see that yellow, yellow line? That's actually the white line here in the throat. That's glue. They glue in these nozzles. You're not going to have a good time doing a nozzle replacement at all. You have a chance of breaking the nozzle in the heat block here. It is heavier. It does take longer to, to heat up, but you're not going to be doing nozzle changes. Um, they do sell hardened steel nozzles you can put in here, but again, that would be no different than you just going to these, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the hot ends and printing with those instead, rather than trying to break your stock nozzle, trying to get the nozzle out. You can buy aftermarket third-party versions of this without the glue. However, the PTF2 is another point of contention. Now, I have the old Capricorn uh, tube for like the Ender 3s that you would put in to reduce the amount of time you would have to spend doing this. This is advertised as aero-grade spaced um, ceramic composite. Of PTFE or basically Teflon. This is the stuff you find in cook pans today, Teflon and ceramic. Uh, you can do composites with copper to get a really good non-stick surface. This is what this is uh, kind of modeled after. It is really, really stiff. However, um, after about 12 hours, you can see a little bit on this side here where the tip of this is starting to narrow. 12 hours at 270 degrees Celsius, 260 degrees Celsius is when Teflon starts to break down. It is already starting to show that it's breaking down a little bit uh, here. It is starting to narrow. And this is creating a problem because now filament that is uh, viscous will start to fill in to the throats. So let me go ahead and just put this down real quick. I'll go ahead and show you. This is the PTFE tube for the stock nozzle. Um, it's sticking out a lot. And the reason why, well, because there is filament in the throat now. I have to like really push in to get that to go through previously it would slide all the way down easily but there is polycarbonate in the throat now and i have no way to clean it because this is all flipping glued down um, this happened because the um, ptfe tube started to shrink and the polycarbonate would backflow into this if there's enough pressure from printing too close to the bed or maybe there is a print that dislodged and now you have a big glob in your in your in your print head over time it's going to get worse and worse and it should not been deforming at 270 degrees celsius this is not a safe ptfe tube lined uh, hot end to use at higher temperatures and they're marketed at 320 degrees celsius makes me very wary uh, because teflon when you know it's at its melting point or starts to degrade uh, is not something you want to be around it's worse than asa it's worse than abs it's not stuff that you want to be breathing in so i would caution very very highly about using this and their third party and not there but other third party hot ends may not be using their ceramic aerospace composite could be just a regular ptfp tube line and you're pushing the stuff up to 320 degrees celsius it's very dangerous for yourself uh, you don't want to be in a room while this stuff is printing so be very careful with this uh, stock hot end it is a better choice for higher quality prints than the abrasive safe versions of this stuff um, but uh, I would just be wary of the temperature. Um, and if, again, if you're only printing in PLA, just stick with this. It's a much better option to do than trying to go to this route and micromanage every little setting here to get the same quality prints that you would get out of the stock nozzle.